So this is PLL-ish 2. Uh, real quickly, the bottom stomp switches control each voice. Left will turn off and on the fuzz voice. Uh, the middle will turn off and on the multiplier voice. And right will turn off and on the divider voice. Um, if you're familiar with PLL pedals, this is the same sort of concept. There's a fuzz voice and then uh, two square waves are generated out of that. Uh, I've used some bit modulation to give the square waves an edge of sorts. Um, and I'm going to go over the controls really quickly. There's a, a volume control for each one, so you can mix them however you like. Uh, the voices, it's hard to balance out all of the different peculiarities of the voice so that they're always uh, equal in gain. So in certain settings, one voice might be louder than the other, even at full tilt. Something you'll have to figure out. Uh, there's a tracking control because with the improvements to the pitch tracker, uh, the pitch tracking is too good. It sounds too good in a lot of cases. And one of the things that, that makes a PLL sort of synth pedal sound good to some people, to me, is a certain amount of glitchiness. So as you increase that, uh, the tracking will become less good. And at a certain point, it won't track really at all. It's contingent upon dynamics. So the louder you play, the better it'll track. The softer you play, the more poorly it will track. Um, and that's related to the, the slew control. Uh, or in this, this case, it uses a CV filter, but the same idea, you know, it's a, a glide, portamento, slew, whatever you want to call it. So the, the longer that is, the, the more the tracking uh, will be affected. When it's at zero, the tracking works as well as the pitch detector will allow it to work. As you increase that again, it will become uh, less, less good. Um, the multiplier pitch and the divider pitch uh, both move through different uh, intervals. Um, so let's just isolate Um, then there are some, uh, so they both have these different pitches. As you turn the multiplier up, the, the multiplier's pitch will go up. As you turn the divider's pitch control up, the divider's pitch will go down. Um, so there's also a slew control for each one, uh, which are independent. So you could have one of the oscillators... Uh, glide very slowly while the other one tracks really quickly. Um, there's also a duty control, which is just sort of an added bonus. It doesn't affect the sound a great deal, but you might mess around with it. It creates some slight variations in tone. Uh, and then each voice has uh, two different types is what I've called them. So when this is off, the multiplier's voice is made by uh, XORing uh, the fuzz voice against the oscillator. When this is on, it oars uh, the oscillator against itself. And in the, the sub voice, it XORs itself, the oscillator against itself, or it ands the oscillator against itself. 
and because Xorin has uh, a rectifying quality, it, it will create some differences in octaves. Um. <laughs> So that's the basic voices. There are a couple of other things that you can do. Um, there's a, a filter envelope. Uh, which allows you to get more synthy tones out of it. It, it also, uh, when it's not engaged, the filter functions as a tone control. Um, so the more open it is, the more gnarly this will sound. Uh, there's a resonance control, the, the envelope depth, uh, which is bipolar, and then uh, a slew rate for the, the envelope follower that gets fed into the, the filter so you can determine how quickly or, or slowly it opens um, and get different sounds out of it that way. There's a, an LFO and the LFO will modulate between the lowest setting of the uh, the multiplier pitch and the, the current setting. So um, let me just turn that on. And it's before the, the slew limiter or the CV filter. So as you turn the, the slew up, it will become more smooth. Um, and the, the UI button determines different uh, shapes. Let me slow this down a little bit so that it's more apparent what's happening here. But you can get sort of glitchy, you know, arcade sounds out of it. So this is a triangle shape. This is a square shape. And this is... That's random. Um, and then the, the divider voice has an FM amount, which can get really gnarly. that in conjunction with the LFO. Then you see me pushing this button, it determines the octave for the multiplier. When it's red, uh, it uses the, the pitch that it receives. When it's yellow, it uses uh, a pitch that's one octave below the pitch it receives. And when it's aqua, it's two octaves below. And then there's a button over here, uh, which is the, the divider's pitch source. Um, so it either takes its pitch information directly from the pitch detector when it's off, or when it's on, it tracks the, the pitch information from the, the multiplier, um, which you can use to create different uh, intervals and chords and that sort of thing. So yeah, there's a bunch of different things here. Um, I call this PLL-ish too. I, I did a patch before called PLL-ish, um, which I, this isn't a replacement for it. It's more of a different approach to the same idea. Um, I'm not going to release it as like version 2 or whatever. I'm just going to release it as a separate patch because uh, I think they they don't overlap uh, in, in enough ways for me to say this is a, a different version of that. It's a different take on the same territory. So 